This video was brought to you by CuriosityStream. Get a whole bunch of exclusive TLDR videos, including the companion to this video, where we answer which country is actually the smartest, by signing up using the link in the description. For most of modern history, IQs in the developed world have been on the rise. However, over the last few decades, raw scores have slowly but surely begun to decline, with no obvious explanation. So in this video, we're going to be trying to figure out what's driving this decline, whether we should be worried about it, and what it might mean for the future. Before we get into data though, a quick primer on intelligence quotients, or IQs. IQ tests are basically any test designed to measure human intelligence. And as such, there's a whole load of different IQ tests out there. But perhaps the most well-known and most commonly used one is the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale. Now, regardless of the specific test taken, these days IQ tests are normally scaled to map onto a particular population. Essentially, raw test scores are transformed to a normal distribution with an average score of 100, which means if you score over 100, then you're of above average intelligence for the population mapped, while if you get below 100, you're of below average intelligence. Now, IQ tests have been the subject of some controversy over the years, largely because they've been used by ethno-nationalists and eugenicists to try and justify some pretty nasty ideas. Now, we're not going to get into that in this video, because that would require an entire separate topic and is mostly just racist drivel anyway. But all we'll say here is that while there are questions about the validity of IQ tests, for instance, whether they really capture the relevant elements of human intelligence, IQ tests are nonetheless very consistent, which means that an observed decline in developed countries is almost definitely real, and not just some statistical accident. But before we get to the modern data, let's roll back the clock a bit. In the decades after World War II, raw IQ scores increased by an equivalent of about three points per decade. Obviously, the nominal mean each year was still technically 100, because that's what the data is normalized to. But the raw scores were going up year by year and decade by decade. Anyway, the name for this phenomenon of rising IQs is the Flynn Effect, named after the psychologist James R. Flynn, who did much to document the phenomenon and promote awareness of its implications. Now, no one knows quite what caused this uplift in IQ scores, and isolating variables here is nearly impossible, because IQ scores are just affected by literally hundreds of different factors, so it's hard to single out any particular factor, given that this uplift covers literally decades. Nonetheless, researchers have discovered some individual contributing factors. These are things like lower levels of iodine deficiency, lead exposure, and smoking. But perhaps the largest single factor is education. Now, obviously intelligence is a good predictor of educational outcomes. High IQ kids tend to do better in schools, but the causation also works in the other direction. Yeah, that's right. Various studies have apparently demonstrated that education can actually increase your performance in IQ tests. For example, a study in Germany gave IQ tests to children in different school years born just days apart i.e. the youngest kids in one year and the oldest kids in another. And the youngest children in the year above performed notably better than the oldest children in the year below, suggesting that an extra year of formal education had actually pushed up their IQ. And recent neuroscientific research has essentially confirmed this hypothesis, finding that certain educational tasks actually produce changes in brain structure, making you fundamentally more intelligent. Given this, if people spent more time in formal education, you'd expect their IQs to improve. And that's exactly what happened in the years after World War II. In the US, for example, formal educational enrollment rates jumped from about 50% in the early 20th century to above 90% today, with the average amount of time spent in formal education nearly doubling during this time period, going from about 6.5 years in 1920 to about 20 years in 1990. Anyway, you get the idea. While scientists aren't totally clued up on the precise causes, for most of modern history, IQs have been rising at an impressive rate, probably thanks to gains in education. But don't get too excited about the possibility of a future Earth inhabited by super geniuses, because according to more recent studies, this trend has been reversed. 
And this reversal was first observed in the IQ scores of military conscripts in northern European countries. Basically, some of these countries require military conscripts to take IQ tests before they join. And researchers noticed that having gone up for many years in the 1990s, scores actually started declining. In Finland, where military service is compulsory for able-bodied men over the age of 18, scores began to decline by the equivalent of two IQ points per decade in 1996. While in Denmark, researchers found scores declining by the equivalent of 2.7 IQ points per decade, in Norway it was spotted to be 0.4 points per decade, and in Sweden, IQs began dropping by 0.3 points per decade by 1992. Essentially, beginning in the mid-90s, various Scandinavian countries started seeing falls in their conscript IQ scores. Worried by these results, researchers started sifting through the data in other developed countries, and discovered hints of something similar in the UK, Australia, France, Germany, and the Netherlands. Interestingly, IQs are apparently still rising in the US, at least according to an analysis from 2014. Although it's worth noting that the US's average IQ is a little bit behind most of the countries we've mentioned so far, and weirdly raw SAT scores are actually falling at the moment, despite a strong correlation between SAT and IQ scores. Regardless, why are we seeing this phenomenon around the world? Why are IQ scores falling in the developed world? Well, for many of the same reasons we mentioned earlier, isolating variables here is nearly impossible. So the truth is that no one knows for sure why IQs are falling. However, there are a couple of hypotheses which we can quickly rule out. Some of the more distasteful figures on the internet have suggested that there are two explanations for this change. Low IQ immigration and what's called dysgenic selection, which refers to the fact that people with lower IQs tend to have more children. However, neither of these theories are particularly compelling. For starters, dysgenic selection precedes this collapse in IQ results. Lower IQ people were having more kids back in the 60s too, but IQ was rising back then. On the immigration front, many of these countries, like say Finland, had negligible levels of non-EU immigrants in the 1990s, which scuppers that theory. And the immigration theory just doesn't make much sense when you consider that a study done in Norway comparing fraternal IQ tests over a period of time suggests that this collapse in IQs is even happening within families. Basically, the Norwegian study compared brothers' scores on conscript IQ tests and found that younger brothers used to score higher than their older brothers. But beginning in the mid-90s, younger brothers started scoring lower suggesting that whatever's causing this IQ decline is environmental, which means that it can't be dysgenic selection or immigration. Now, while we can rule these two options out, as we mentioned, no one knows quite what the reason for it is. Some people have argued that we've just maxed out the possible educational-related gains to IQ, although this wouldn't really explain why IQ's actually falling instead of plateauing and that modern nutrition and associated obesity risks are having an adverse effect on intelligence. Although it's hard to square this with the fact that US IQ scores are still rising, despite the obesity crisis within the country. Some researchers have even suggested that it might be something to do with so-called endocrine-disrupting chemicals, or EDCs, a catch-all term for various pesticides, plasticizers, nitrates, and sulfacants that we're exposed to every day. Researchers have already demonstrated that certain pesticides and flame retardants can cause IQ loss, but the true impact of all of the various EDCs on IQ is as yet unknown. Ultimately then, what we do know is that IQs are falling around the world. What we don't know is why. Whether you think we should be worried about this or not will depend on what you think about IQ tests. If you think that they're a good measure of intelligence, then it's likely the fact that the developed world is getting stupider will worry you. But if you're more wary of IQ tests, and fair enough, then you probably won't be too fussed about this data. In the end though, if IQ tests are declining around the world, where was the smartest place to begin with? Well, we dive into that in our companion video exclusively on Nebula. There you'll also get a ton of other exclusive videos, like our explainer on the island that will kill you, our interview about why Europe is forcing Apple to put USB-C on iPhones, and even some fun stuff like our office tour and blooper reel.
Now, if you're interested in that, then I've got some good news, because we've partnered with CuriosityStream, home of the best documentaries online. And thanks to them, you can get both streaming services, CuriosityStream for the documentaries and Nebula for bonus TLDR for less than $15 a year. That's a wild deal and a 26% discount on their already low price. So get yourself a ton of documentaries and exclusive content from your favorite creators, including the Daily Briefing Extended Edition, by signing up using the link below. Thanks for your support.